What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In this video, we are going to be covering loops with Swift UI. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new module. As always, we're going to just call this loops. Move it down here, create a new Swift file or Swift UI view, call it loops module. So if you guys haven't taken the fundamentals course, this is where things are going to start to get messy. If you don't understand the concept of a loop, guys, you need to stop what you're doing right now, go and take the fundamentals course, and then come back to this bootcamp. I'm not going to be explaining loops in detail here. I'm going to assume that you know what a loop is in programming, at least with some basic level of understanding, and that's what we're going to be covering in this module. So in Swift UI, guys, we can leverage the use of loops for each loop specifically to help us create views. So this is a really, really awesome and powerful feature. So let me go over and show you what this is going to look like. So you're going to go ahead and say for each, and you're going to select this option that says data and content. So similar to a for loop, guys, we have to supply this loop with a range. And that's the amount of times this loop is going to run. So you guys might be able to see where this is going already. We're get, we can use this for each loop to help us create views repeatedly, very efficiently, and very fast, right? With very, very few lines of code. And we're going to see how we can leverage this to create super, super clean code with Swift UI. So let's just go ahead and maybe say like zero up to 100. And then on the content tab, you're going to hit enter and it's gonna open up a closure. And then you're gonna get access to the integer that we are looping through in that guy right here. So this should all look pretty familiar if you've already taken the fundamentals course. And if you guys need a refresher, go back to the loops module and then come back to this here. So we can just say index in, and then I can just go here and say text hello index. And you guys are going to notice that we get an error and this doesn't work just yet. So this is a concept that confuses a lot of people with loops and Swift UI. I'm going to break it down for you guys. So after this zero to hundred range guys, we're going to say ID colon backslash dot self. And then you guys will notice that everything is going to, Ooh, <laughs> we created a hundred simulators. We actually need to put this inside of a V stack. That's my bad. Let's go ahead and say V stack. Boom. And you guys will notice that we get a bunch of stuff showing up on the screen with just a few lines of code, right? So this leverages the power of loops to help us create view components. You guys can imagine that if I wanted to create exactly what I see here on screen, uh, it would require that I write a hundred lines of code and say, hello, one, hello, two, three, four, five. And let's just go ahead and maybe change this to 10 so that we can see everything showing up on screen here, guys. So, um, Loops and Swift UI are absolutely amazing. And we're gonna go over a couple more examples of how we can use them and leverage them to create really awesome user interfaces in a really concise and clean manner. So really quickly though, let me explain this ID backslash dot self guy that we are seeing here. So basically guys, each view that gets created within this for each loop needs a particular ID assigned to it so that Swift UI can distinguish between each view that exists within that particular stack. So you guys can imagine that if each one of these all had the same ID, SwiftUI wouldn't know which one is which or be able to distinguish one element from the next, and it would make your user interface impossible to render, or it would make it really messy, right? Because um, the way that SwiftUI renders views, if it can't tell things apart, it might have trouble rendering or creating those views. So I think this is, should be pretty self-explanatory if you guys understand what loops are at this point. So any, basically anything that we apply or you know, add inside of this loop closure is going to get created for us by uh, you know, <clears throat> X amount of times or however many times this loop runs. So for example, I could go here and add another text component, loop ended, and it'll run through all of this stuff create it and then it will add you know whatever shows up underneath that and you guys could do the same thing for h stacks and v stacks and all that stuff right We're, we don't need to get into that um, what i do want us to do however is go over uh, how we can create this 
user interface that we had over here a lot more efficiently by using a loop, right? So you guys will notice that we had a whole lot of copy and pasted code in our spacers module when we're creating this list, right? And we can use a loop to create this same exact user interface with significantly less code by leveraging the power of for each loops in Swift UI. So what I want us to do guys is just go ahead and copy this H stack. Once again, let's go to our loops module and let's go ahead and paste that in there. And you guys will notice that bam, we get 10 of those user cells showing up there beautifully. And guys on this V stack right here, I can go ahead and add my padding and it'll make everything look nice and neat with all that spacing on the edges. So this is a whole lot less code to create this stuff 10 times, right? You guys can imagine how awful this would be if we had to paste this 10 times um, just to get the same effect. And that is not scalable in any way, shape or form, right? You could imagine if this was an actual mobile application and you were fetching all of this data from say an API, like with Instagram, you don't know how many users are gonna get displayed, right? So you can't just copy and paste stuff like that because you don't know exactly how many people are gonna come back. You need to use some sort of loop to loop through a data structure, which we're gonna do here in a second, to render the exact amount of items that you need. So on that note, guys, let's go ahead and create like an array up here. And we're gonna loop through this array and that's gonna allow us to create um, you know, the proportionate amount of views based on a data structure. So right now we're just looping through a static range of indices or numbers. Um, I want to, I want to show you guys what it looks like to loop through an actual data structure, uh, very similar to what we saw in the Swift fundamentals course, right? We noticed that, yeah, we could use loops to help us do things repeatedly, very efficiently, but we could also use them to loop through data structures. So let's go ahead and create an array and it's going to be a string array. And it's going to equal just a bunch of driver names. So we can say like Lewis Hamilton, Checo Perez, Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, and maybe like Max Verstappen too. So now we have a data array, guys. So how do we modify this for each loop? to loop through this array and maybe just display the driver name here. So what we could do is replace zero to 10 with this driver's array. We do have to keep the ID backslash dot self guy um, because each one of our view components does need an ID and we're basically just assigning the self to it. And we'll go over uh, this concept in more detail and how we can avoid doing that in a future video. Um, but now guys, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So before we were looping through a range of numbers and we named this property in the closure index, right? And in that case, it was representing a number. So in this case now, because we're looping through an array of strings, each item here in the closure is going to be a string. So you guys will notice here that I'm gonna to wanna to call this something like driver or name or something like that, right? I always like to name this parameter here that represents each item that I'm uh, accessing at that particular iteration of the loop, something that makes sense. Like you don't just wanna call this like X or something, because if you came back and looked at this code, you would have no idea what X was. It would take a little bit more digging, right? So let's call it driver. And then let's go here guys. And in this text component, instead of just hard coding Lewis Hamilton, we can replace that with the driver name. And you guys will notice that a lot of the other data is the same, right? But now each one of our driver names is uh, actually dynamic, right? So we are looping through this driver array and we are looking at each one of the strings and dropping it into this text component here. So if you guys wanted this to be like, make a little bit more sense, just comment that stuff out, right? And then you could see here that, you know, that's what it's gonna look like. And uh, if you want to apply some spacing to each one of those guys, let's maybe do like 32. Oh, we can't do it there. We need to do it on the overall V stack, right? So let's say spacing 32. Um, that looks a little bit better, right? So this should make more sense, guys. We are looping through this driver's array and at each iteration, we have access to the particular driver that we are looking at. First, it's Lewis, then it's Checo, then it's Lando, then it's Charles, then it's Max. And then we are able to display that driver name there. Uh, we're going to go over how to make this list 
more dynamic and display like an individual uh, profile image and use and unique username for each driver. But for now, this is all we are going to be doing with loops. So that just gives you guys an idea as to how awesome loops are with Swift UI. Really helps us leverage the power of loops in general to help us create views. And we can loop through data structures the same way we saw with forward loops um, to help us display things, right? And you guys will notice that I only get back, you know, one, two, three, four, five drivers because we are looping through this data structure here. The loop knows exactly when to start and when to end its execution. So as soon as I get to the end of my array, I stop and I exit this for each loop and then I just go and uh, render this next view here. So loops are great in SwiftUI. We use them all the time when we are working with displaying lists of data. Um, so for example, guys, like we do that here in the threads clone, right? We loop through some array of users and we display all of those guys in a list. And also, you know, we do the same thing with the homepage on the threads clone, except here we're looping through an array of threads and displaying each individual thread. So loops are extremely common in Swift UI. That gives you guys an awesome introduction to them. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. In the next one, we are gonna be getting started with scroll views. So get excited for that, guys. We will see you there. Peace out.